Let's just start with a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Let's suppose we take a sample, a sample of n values, like x1, x2, etc. And then we compute the average, the mean of these values. And we repeat this process. If we repeat this a thousand times, a million times, the question would be, how are the values of x average distributed? Well, the answer is they are normally distributed, specifically with a mean mu and standard deviation sigma divided the square root of the number of samples. Okay, let's try a different, slightly different case. Let's suppose we have different normal distributions, each one with this average and standard deviation, and we sample, we sample one value from each distribution, and then we compute the average. If we do this a lot of times, how would these average values be distributed exactly as a normal distribution? We can even change the underlying distributions. Let's suppose that we have an exponential distribution that doesn't look like a normal at all, and we sample a number of values, x1, x2, x3, etc., and then we compute the average. And we repeat this, as in the case before, a number of times. So how would the average value be distributed? Exactly as a normal distribution. And now things get interesting. Let's suppose that we have a number of different distributions, all different, like an exponential, like a normal distribution, like a uniform distribution, uh, like a Bernoulli trial, I mean, any distribution you can think of. And we sample one value from each distribution. And then we compute the average. How would this average be distributed? Exactly as a normal distribution. There is a mathematical proof for that, but it's way beyond the scope of this course. But this is what we call, or what is called, the central limit theorem. And it's a very important concept in statistics. 